Hi Flosstube, it's Nicole, Buckeye Stitcher. I'm here to do my March update finally. It's like the first full week of April and I'm finally getting to it, but I have my list, I have my pile. I've got my sunglasses on because my hair is a crazy mess today and I'm due to get it cut, so things are out of control here. Um, first, let me show you um, something that I got back from my framer. Um, my framer is also my LNS, so I try and take um, my things there uh, if it's big enough to be framed. Um, she has two sales a year, and so I try to wait for those two sales, but this one I did just because I wanted to get it done. Um, this is Halloweenies by Plum Street Sampler. I like it. Happy with that. I'll put it away till the fall, but that's cute. I also finished... Um, Holly Jolly Soul by Brenda Gervais, but I shipped that and a few things to Vanna. So I don't have um, anything to show now. I'll try and put a picture in here. Hopefully that worked. Um, so I shipped four things, including Holly Jolly Soul, to Vanna last week. I'm number 25 in her list of finishing. I know she um, took some time off because she was teaching at a retreat. She um, had some other things to get done. So everything I sent off was all kind of Christmassy or later in the year themed. So there's no rush for me to get it back. But I am always excited to get my stuff back from her because um, it looks so cute when it comes back. Um, okay, what else? And then I finished my Foxwood Crossings sled ornament. I hate perforated paper. However, I love the stuff that gets done on perforated paper, so I will do it again. But I have definitely learned that I, I don't like hand-dyed threads on perforated paper because this pattern called for three threads, and I just felt like it was... I was losing the modeling and the hand-dyed threads. I also felt like sometimes I wasn't seeing the modeling because there were too many threads overlapping each other. So for the most part, I used DMC. I did use the hand-dyed threads in the red. I don't know if you're going to be able to see because I'm not sure about this lighting. Um, I did use it here. I don't know how much you can really tell, but it's really, really cute. Um, and so I got all ready to do my video today and I got my sled out to put it on there. I don't have a sled. All the sleds I have are the small ones and this takes the large one. Um, so I'll have to go to my LNS and get that. So my goal is to try and get an ornament done a year. So far I've only done two. This one and one of the chalkboard ornaments from Hands On Design. But this one's for my mom for Christmas. Um, he originally had a little uh, squirrel here but I just didn't care for the way it looked. The proportion was off, so I just made it all snow. Um, the other thing, I'm a complete idiot with this pattern. So I think it's really cute. It was a Santa. I couldn't really figure out all that was going on with this bag and these red blobs. Try over here. Nope. So it was almost all the way done before I realized that these red blobs are cardinals. And there's one on his shoulder. And his arm is up feeding this little thing birdseed because there's birdseed in this bag. I don't know what I thought was going on. There's a freaking birdhouse right there. What do you think these red blobs are? So now that I know what the heck is going on in this thing, it's really cute. I like it, and I'm sure my mom will like it too. Um, so yeah, hate perforated paper, but we'll continue to stitch on it because I like all these little sleds and the Mill Hill kits. Oh, perforated paper. Okay, so that was done. I think that's all that I got done. It really has not been a very productive March. And April really is looking that way either. Um, so my 17 a day, haven't done anything on that. Homeward Trail in winter, nothing's done on that. Um, I did, this is how far I got with the Joyful World Sal March. He's so stinking cute, but that's all I got done. And I'm not doing all 12 of them. I think there's only, including this one, six more than I'm doing this year. Um, so I figure I'm just gonna do as much as I can in the month that it is. And whatever I don't get finished, then um, I'll just do in the other months that I'm not doing. Like, I'm not doing August or September and November. So I'll just try and get caught up there. So, and I was practicing here. Um, one of my subscribers left a comment because I was complaining last time about how I'm not really getting very good coverage with this dark color on his little bottom. Um, and she recommended using silk. And I've never used silk before. I have some, but I never used it. So I bought a brownish black that was similar to this color. 
I just don't know if I'm supposed to use one strand or two. This is 36 count, so I tried both. And I don't know if I feel like it's any different than when I use the DMC. So I'll keep playing around with that. But if anybody could tell me if I'm supposed to use one strand or two of silk, depending, I don't know if it depends on the fabric like it does with DMC or if it's just one always. Um, so that's where I am with that. And then I started April. This is the pattern for April. <laughs> that little bunny is so cute. This is as far as I've gotten. Just the bunny and his little carrot. Um, so we'll see how much I can get done with that. And I'm doing this on the same fabric as the other two, which is 36 count Lakeside Linen Vintage Exemplar, which I need more of. I'm going to have to order more of that. Um, and then I think that's all my progress. That's all I've worked on. Yep, that's all I've worked on. Um, my plans for April are to finish the Joyful World Sal, hopefully get this month done. Um, my next ornament that I want to get done is this... Mill Hill perforated paper. But I love cardinals. Love, love, love cardinals. So I want to do this one for myself. And then I got this free pattern when I was at my LNS picking up the framing a couple weeks ago. Um, it is 2003 Elizabeth's Design. Um, and it's a free chart, so I can show it. But it's the first Robin of Spring. So that's cute, and it's tiny, and I should be able to finish that. And the birds are singing right now. The sun is out. It's like 60 degrees in Ohio. I think spring finally is here. I've got one tulip that's popping up. Um, and when I get done, I'll try and take a video of my backyard because everything's green and everything's starting to bloom. Um, I have some planter boxes that my boyfriend built on my deck, and a couple years ago, my neighbor gave me some seed bombs that she made herself. So you take seeds, and it's like paper mache little balls and you basically just throw them in the dirt and they're supposed to mostly be wildflowers and they just kind of take off. So I threw them in some of the planters and every year they come up and every year there's more. So there's those little tiny pansy faces that are so cute. So um, I like to peep on all of your houses. So I'm going to show you my backyard today, hopefully, if all, if all things go well with this video. Um, okay, so let me see where we are. Update. Oh, I have one funny story to tell you. So I don't Usually, I leave comments, but other than that, I don't really do thumbs up, thumbs down. I think, I don't know if that's all related to Facebook or whatever. So, I don't typically do it. But I watch all my YouTube videos on my phone, which is a much smaller screen. Um, and I've got fat thumbs. So, sometimes I bump things that I'm not intending to bump. So, for example, in the morning when I'm getting ready for work, I usually try to catch up on floss tubers whose videos I haven't watched all of. Like, right now I'm getting caught up on Dina's from Half Stitch Cross Stitch because, yeah, I know. What the heck? I haven't watched her videos yet. I think I'm almost over halfway there. A couple weeks ago, I was getting caught up on Minnie from All X's. And I love Minnie. She is so peaceful. She truly loves, loves all of her projects, um, even if she's not going to stitch them. She just loves them. It's just fun to see how much joy she gets out of her projects. I don't think I've ever heard her say anything negative about any project, any fabric, any anything. Um, anyways, I just love her videos. So I was getting ready for work, and one of her videos was getting ready to end. So I was trying to get make sure that the next one was going to be the one in line. And in doing that, swiping quickly, I hit the thumbs down and swiped her video off the screen. I've done that before by mistake, but I've been able to tap it again on the same screen and the thumbs down goes away. Well, when I swiped it down, I closed it. So I had to go back in and open it. And when I tapped it again, it gave her a second thumbs down. So for those of you who are getting thumbs down and you don't know why, it's probably me and my fat thumbs bumping the thumb when I'm trying to just go to the next video. So I messaged Minnie and told her, I didn't mean to do that. I love your videos. I love your projects. I've got fat thumbs and I just bumped it by mistake. So if you're getting thumbs down, you don't know why. It's probably me. Um, and then the other thing I was going to talk about, and, but I'm not sure, this may be an old thing and you guys may already know about this, but there are a couple cross-stitch apps that will allow you to log all the floss that you have. You can segregate your floss based on um, project. You can make a shopping list. Um, there's two that I have because when I first downloaded them, one was only for DMC and the other one was only for specialty threads, weeks and general art. I think now the cross-stitcher, which is actually X... What am I doing with my hands? X Stitcher app um, does all of it, DMC and those two specialty threads. 
I think I paid $2.99 or $3.99 a few years ago. It's not a perfect app. There's sometimes where I, I swear I marked that I needed it and it's not on my shopping list. It's kind of a pain in the neck to delete something from your shopping list once you put it there. Um, but it's better than random scraps of paper all through my purse when I go to Joann's to get my, my floss. Um, so it's X Stitcher app. And of course now I forget what the other one is called and I'm filming on my phone so I can't very well turn it off and start it back. I'll put it in the bottom um, in the description. I'll put the two apps that I have. I don't know if anybody already knows about those or if it's something that you're interested in. That's the extent of my technology when it comes to cross-stitching. Um, speaking of DMC, Joann's, today's the fifth. Today's the last day of Joann's 3 for 99 cents DMC. Um, and I really didn't need any. I'm trying to stitch from stash, so I've only been buying them as I need them. I thought about going to get a full set of DMC, but I don't want to wind all those bobbins and stick all those stickers, and I don't have a floss box big enough. I can't find that double one that everybody has that you flip over. I can't find it at Joann's. I can't find it at Michael's. I think I looked on Amazon, and I can't find it there. So I didn't, I wasn't going to partake in the sale, but I had my giveaway last week and the person who won my giveaway is Zara Klee. Hi Zara. Um, and she, um, requested her gift certificate to be at 123 Stitch because she lives in Australia and that's just the easiest way for her to get her, um, products. She doesn't have an LNS. Um, so when I realized that she was in Australia, I messaged her, private messaged her, and asked her if she wanted me to kit up any projects for her with DMC since the 3 for 99 cent sale is going on. And DMC floss in Australia is ridiculous. Ridiculous. She told me she pays anywhere from 75 cents to $1.40 per skein. First of all, why does it fluctuate so much? And second of all, that is ridiculous. So anyways, She's working on some Halloween projects. She said her daughter really likes owls, and she's got two Halloween projects from one of the Just Cross Stitch Halloween um, magazines that she's working on. So she sent me her list. So Zara, if you're watching, here are all your flosses that you asked for. Yay! Um, there was one color that they didn't have, so I just substituted, I think, B5200. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know, because who doesn't need B5200, right? Um, and so then while I was at it, I also messaged Teresa Craig. She and I started making floss tube videos around the same time. And I kind of feel like if you start watching people who are new when you're new, that's kind of the group that you kind of bond with or have a connection with. And, um, you know, not that I don't love people who have been doing them for years, Vanna and Dina at Half Stitch Crash Stitch. I mean, there's a ton that I watch that have been doing it for years, and I love them. Um, but they have so many followers and so many comments that I feel like they've kind of got their own subset. Um, but anyway, so Teresa started doing her videos the same time I did. And so I've um, consistently messaged back and forth with her, um, you know, on our videos. So I always knew that when there was a big sale, I was going to message her and ask her if she wanted me to send her a bunch of DMC. Because, I mean, three for 99 cents. Come on. So she wasn't going to. And I, she said she couldn't. She couldn't. She appreciated it, but she just couldn't do it. And I said, no, just do it. Just do it. So she's kidding up a Chatelaine. She would only give me half of the colors that she wanted, which is fine. So she gave me 20 colors, and they, I was able to get all of hers except one. So I threw in a 310 because, again, who doesn't need 310? So these are all her colors. And she's doing, I think it's a garden-themed Chatelaine, so the colors are really cool. So I'm going to get those into the little packages and head off to the post office today after I get the haircut. Um, and send those off. So that was really fun. I'm glad I can send those um, to you guys. So I don't know how long it's going to take to get there. Hope you don't plan on doing that Chatelaine anytime soon, Teresa. Um, okay, let me look at my list here. I guess that's all I had. I swear I had more stuff to say. I feel like as I've been watching videos the past couple weeks, I keep thinking, oh, I need to talk about that in my video. I need to talk about that in my next video. But I didn't write it down, and so it's gone. So this is only 14 minutes long. So I'm going to do the know you'll need a worker tag. Um, and then I guess that's it. I don't, I don't have any haul because I am stitching from stash. And I'm not stitching very much. So <laughs> nothing's coming in. Nothing's really going out. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, so the know you need a worker tag. The first question is where do you live? I live outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, in the Midwest. What do you do for a living? I am a veterinarian. Um, I'm a small animal veterinarian, so cats, dogs, rabbits, guinea pigs, that kind of thing. Um, I would love it if you told me what your pet's name was, because I love knowing pet's names, but 
everybody always wants to ask me free medical advice when they hear I'm a veterinarian. And while I love helping animals and helping people who have animals, I can't give medical advice to an animal I have never seen before. And you would be shocked at the number of people who I've never met who will just randomly ask me medical questions. For example, I was at a party a couple years ago that friends of mine gave. Um, on a weekend night, there was alcohol, I was drinking, I met someone I had not met before, and he proceeded to ask me medical questions about his dog because he had been to his vet and wasn't getting any answers. Now, number one, I have never met you before. For all you know, I could be a quack or I could be making up that I'm even a veterinarian. Number two, I had a drink in my hand and it was after 10 o'clock, so I'm sure I already had another drink in my body. Um, yeah, I can't really give you any medical advice. I don't know you, I don't know your pet, so you are welcome to put what you have and what their names are. Don't ask me what's wrong with them. But I love my job, I do love my job. I worked really, really hard to get into vet school and I worked really, really hard to get out of vet school, but um, I do love my job. Um, hobbies other than stitching, I love to read. Um, I'm addicted to podcasts, um, so that I guess that's a hobby. Like when I walk in my dog, I listen to podcasts. When I'm driving to and from work, I listen to podcasts. Um, I feel like as we go along this needleworker tag, you're gonna find out I'm kind of a dork. Um, do I have any children? No, nope, no thank you. Um, not the path I was led down, and that's fine. Do I have pets? Of course I have pets. Um, you just heard my big old pit bull barking. I don't even know what he's barking at. Um, his name is Mayday. He is 12 years old. I've had him since he was just under two pounds. He showed up at work. Um, kids who bought him too young, um, took him away from his mom too young, couldn't afford his care, um, and turned him over to our office um, to either try to find a home if he lived or humanely put him to sleep if we couldn't fix him. Um, well, of course, you know, I'm going to keep this dog that I've just spent weeks on. Um, so now 12 years later, I've got my Mayday dog. And right now I only have one cat. I used to have three, but over the past year and a half or so, I've, I've lost two. So I've got an 18 and a half year old. Well, you saw him. I saw him in the video. His name is Fitch. Um, he is my buddy. I have had him for all, of, all but like eight weeks of his life. Um, he's my buddy. So yeah, Pat's favorite movie. I don't have a favorite movie. I don't like movies. The last movie I saw in a movie theater was Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, which was like 21 years ago. I still don't understand what the deal is with that movie. I don't get it. Um, I just don't like to sit still, which makes no sense because I can sit still through a play. I can sit still through a Broadway show. Um, I always buy the Broadway series when it comes through Cincinnati. Um, I saw Hamilton in New York City and I loved it. Um, but I cannot sit through a movie. I start asking questions right away. I don't want the anticipation. I just want to know what happens. Which makes no sense because I can sit for two hours and read a book. Um, so, no, I don't have a favorite movie. Um, favorite TV show? So, I love Big Bang Theory. I loved Friends. I'll still watch Friends episodes. But honestly, I watch Floss Tube so much now at night when I'm stitching. I don't really watch anything. Oh, football. I love NFL football and college football. So, when it's football season, um, I'm right there um, on the couch stitching. <laughs> Um, favorite music, mm, I like pop, some rap if it's like dance rap, not hardcore rap. Um, like I said, I listen to podcasts now on my way to and from work, so I can't even tell you what's current. I probably listened to podcasts for the last two years. Um, I do like some classical music if it's like strings and horns. There you go. Um, favorite book. So I have two favorite authors. My favorite American author is Adriana Trajani, and my favorite book of hers is called Lucia Lucia. Um, her books are wonderful. She, the first one I ever read from her, I think was her first one, um, Welcome to uh, Big Stone Gap. That's where she grew up in Virginia, and so it's loosely based on people that she was exposed to, um, but it's a, well, it's not a trilogy because there's four now. I don't know what's called. What's it called when there's four? Anyways, she's got a ton of books. Um, a couple other trilogies. They're all really, really good. Um, she has Italian background. I have Italian background. So um, a lot of her books have Italian characters or characters with Italian heritage. Um, so I, I really like her books. My favorite, um, well, that's not true. I can't even say my favorite European author because I have two. So Maeve Binchy is my, used to be my only favorite author outside of the States. She's Ireland from Ireland. Um, her stories are just wonderful. They've got tons of characters and I just never want them to end. Some of the characters show up in other books, but you don't have to read the previous book in order for this one to make sense. I was heartbroken when she died a couple years ago. Um, but I also love, recently in the past year or two, I have discovered Jojo Moyes. I think she's Australian. 
Um, the first one I read from her was One Plus One. It's um, adorable. It's adorable. I actually listened to it. I didn't read it. And I would listen to it on the way to work, and I would sit in my car when I got to work to finish the chapter. Um, I'd be laughing as I was walking my dog listening to this book. So One Plus One by Jojo Moyes. I'll put it down below. M-O-Y-E-S is how she spells her last name. The second one I read from her was Me Before You, which was made into a movie this year. Oh, my God. It's so good, but you look like an idiot when you're walking your dog with your headphones and you're crying because it, I, I, the book was so good. And there's a sequel out. It's good, too. Not as good as the first one, but it's really good. So I've, I think I've read all of her books. Um, and then, of course, I love Harry Potter. The Harry Potter series was really good. Um, I resisted reading those. My bro I have a brother who's much younger than I am, and so he was a kid when all those were popular. I was in vet school, so I was not going to do the Harry Potter thing. I wasn't going to jump on the bandwagon, blah, 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 blah. I went home for a um, Christmas break one year when I was in vet school, and I asked him if I could borrow some of his books, so I took the first three back with me, um, and I read all three in like the span of a week or less. And I was like so immersed in this Harry Potter land that I was like, it would be really cool to have an invisibility cloak. Think of all the things you could do. Like I just, like I was on overload. So I like those books and I love the girl with the dragon tattoo books. Um, I cannot remember how to say his name. Um, they're a little graphic, but they're so good. The only problem with them is that the names of the places and the people, because it's set in... Oh, Ingeborg, is it set where you are in the Netherlands? Or is it, no, he's Swedish. I think he's Swedish. Anyways, the names aren't names that I could pronounce, so I ended up just kind of like saying them in my head like I thought they sounded. The first hundred pages or so are completely dry and boring, and I couldn't figure out why these books were so popular, but stick with it, because it's so good. It's so good. Okay. Okay, back to this. Favorite music, favorite book. One word that describes you best... I would say driven. I don't like to hear the word no. So I would say driven. I'm just very determined to get things done and get it the way I want it, which kind of makes me sound a little bratty. I don't think I'm bratty. I think I'm just driven. Yeah, okay. All right, I think that's it. I don't really have anything else to say or show. I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff, so... I don't know, maybe I'll make another little add-on to add to this. I'm gonna stop it right now. I'm gonna take my phone outside and see if I can get any good video to show you my little pansies. Um, so happy stitching in the month of April. Cross your fingers that I get some stuff done so that the next video I can actually show you stuff. Um, well, I think that's it, bye. Okay, so here is my backyard. I back up to an abandoned, well, it's not abandoned. They just sold the building used to be some kind of a plant way back there. So basically it's just woods. Lots of deer and rabbits and we hear coyotes too, which I'm not really a big fan of that, but the deer are fun. Um, so here, let me show you my pansies. So these were made from seed bombs that my neighbor gave me one year for my birthday and they are in full bloom. They are so happy. It's sunny. Yep. So that's it. That is what spring in Ohio looks like this year. See ya.